Singaporeans have certainly started flying again. Passenger traffic at Changi Airport doubled in April from the previous month. It's now close to 40% of pre-pandemic levels. Meanwhile, Singapore Airlines and its subsidiary Scoot recorded a total of 893,000 passengers in March, an almost ninefold increase from a year ago as travel restrictions continued to ease. SIA says it expects passenger capacity to reach around 61% of pre-COVID levels by this month. While all this points to a recovery in the aviation sector, Experts say airlines are not out of the woods just yet. Our own forecast is that the global aviation market will only recover to pre-pandemic in 2024. And Asia-Pacific will lag behind. Uh, we think that Asia-Pacific will take up to 2025 uh, to recover. As long as the major markets remain to be quite close, and here we're talking China is still kind of close, Japan is relatively close. Even South Korea still imposed limits on aircraft movements per hour at Incheon Airport. So those three big markets, that's not going to help the region. Two is, how easy is it travel? So if you continue to have quarantine requirements, if you continue to have testing, um, you know, which is costly and time consuming, then that's going to retard the, the recovery. Before the pandemic, travellers from China made 155 million international trips, spending over 240 billion US dollars. But China's zero COVID policy and recent lockdowns means the world's largest tourist market is effectively not flying. The global airlines add together lost 52 billion dollars US, right? And in the Asia Pacific, even for this year, we think that uh, combined they will still lose something like two and a half billion dollars US. So I think it's going to be a struggle for airlines to get back to a level of financial uh, stability. Uh, they have raised liquidity, they've taken on more debt. Uh, it will not go away so quickly. Some airlines will struggle with, uh, with human resource because they have let go of uh, staff and they need training to bring them back. And we're already seeing that, that uh, uh, whether at the airport or in the air, people are already starting to feel the, the pressure of uh, inadequate staff resources. According to UOB Kehian, the recovery of the Singapore aviation sector is on track. The investment house says that the sector is likely to recover to pre-pandemic levels towards the end of 2024. But market watchers are less bullish about Singapore Airlines. There are certain risks that investors need to, to think about as well. So one of it is, of course, uh, with rising inflation, uh, there, are, there will be higher jet fuel prices, which could result in higher airfares, and that could be passed on to consumers, which may lead to lower demand. And on top of that, SIA may also face a slower than expected recovery due to, uh, let's say, the discovery of new COVID-19 variants, which may lead to renewed lockdowns and travel restrictions in the region. And on top of that, shareholders also face potential earnings per share dilution because of the massive rights issue that the company undertook back in 2020. Yeah, so these are some risks that uh, investors need to take note about before investing into SIA. The post-pandemic new normal may also not be quite exactly the way things were before. Business travel is not coming back to the way it was in the pre-pandemic era. Front end of the aircraft, which was the most profitable uh, contributor to the airline profits, is not going to be the same amount of load factors that we used to see in the past. Uh, the concern here, obviously, is the airlines will have to then remodel their capacity. There'll be more focus on premium economy and economy uh, passenger services rather than business and first class. Businesses are getting more ESG compliant. Aviation themselves have to realize that they are the largest carbon emitters when it comes to transport sector. They need to be more ESG compliant. And businesses are making conscious decision to be more sustainable in their operations. So instead of flying more often, if there's an alternate route or an option available, that will be preferred. Instead of looking purely at airlines, experts advise investors to look at the wider aviation sector. One bright spot that performed well even during the lockdowns was the maintenance, repair and overhaul or MRO sector. 
ST Engineering is our preferred pick here. Uh, they are the world's largest airframe MRO service provider. They are well diversified. They have presence in Asia, Europe, US, where domestic aviation traffic is actually coming back pretty strongly. So they will benefit. What they also did during the pandemic was uh, they tried to move away from being purely an MRO service provider to being a passenger to freighter conversion. Now, when the passenger traffic was down and we still needed our goods to be delivered on time, there was a massive demand for freighters. And we think the demand will sustain because, you know, it keeps your supply chain more agile, especially in uncertain environments where shipping is probably struggling to cope up. Given the current uncertain economic environment, the best advice is to remain diversified. Investors who are thinking of investing in aviation plays right now will first have to look at the current valuations and assess if the risk and rewards are adequately priced in. So for example, if there is a certain catalyst that is not reflected in the price, then investors, uh, and that, that could be a good thing for investors. And on top of that, for investors who are not very confident in their stock picking skills, they may want to consider other instruments that provide diversification, such as unit trusts or ETFs. So ETS, for instance, they provide exposure to a basket of aviation stocks, which uh, can help to diversify the risk and also exposure of investors 